Hello again and welcome back to the channel. Um, I don't have an update for the car this time, unfortunately. I'm currently working on getting the AC controller to work properly. But I did, however, just finish updating the firmware for the Robo 3D R1 on my 3D printer. So what I've done is I've changed a few settings that I'll go over in just a minute. Um, just to optimize the functionality of the Robo 3D, um, R1 Plus, of course. And I have the links in the description below if you would like to download the latest firmware release that I have. I'm using Marlin 1.1.9, and I've gone through the code multiple times to verify that I have everything set up the way that I want it to. Um, my configuration has a full graphic smart controller, so uh, if you have a different configuration, um, let me know and I can definitely help you out getting that set up for you. But if you have a full graphic smart controller, 800 sets per unit lead screws and a single extruder, um, this G code should work, not G code, this firmware should work perfectly for you. So, overall, the configuration is pretty standard. There's not much to change in the firmware except maybe for the offset of your Z axis when it probes the, uh, the bed. But for the most part, what I've updated and changed not necessarily updated, but what I've uncommented are two major features that aren't stock. So I've increased the speed of the homing. So that's what you see here. Um, the original homing speed is a little slower than normal, so I've bumped that up just a little bit to, to what the printer can handle and still be accurate. So the only two things you might have to do is the Z-probe offset and a PID tune. But besides that, everything else just should work in the firmware. If you have this LCD controller, there is one thing that someone on Reddit definitely helped me out with. Thank you. Insert screenshot here. Um, and basically what happened was the timing was off on the LCD and it kind of looked like this. And so now it looks proper. And that was just from the update of the, of the firmware. So that has been changed and that is now working properly. So if you have this LCD controller that controls your Robo 3D and you are using this firmware to control your Robo 3D from Marlin 1.1.9, this controller should work. This is the RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. It's like 12 bucks and it's amazing. All right, so now it's gonna home one more time. And so what I've done is also speed up the G29 or the auto bed leveling. So the probe distance between each probe is a lot smaller than it was before. Um, those values were a lot higher and it makes for a really slow bed probe. But it's still accurate enough to get the z-axis leveled properly. But if you have your bed level in the first place, you don't really have to worry about it. So I'm trying to get you a close-up of what this looks like. But if I go ahead and print. I have enabled a function called it's called baby stepping. So if you go to here, you go to tune, and you scroll down to baby step Z, you actually have the ability to increase, so right now I'm raising it, or lowering the Z axis in the middle of the print. Of course, these steps aren't really huge, so it's hard to see. I'm gonna try to get up a big distance so you can see the difference. Yeah, so I'm up pretty far now. So you can see that I increased the z-axis to 0.615. And it's currently too high to actually get a good print. So I'm going to go ahead and lower that back to zero because my z-probe offset is correct. But if your z-probe offset for some reason isn't correct, you can adjust it on the fly. I'm adjusting this back to zero. And... There we go. So you can see on the first print that where I raised it and lowered it. So it was doing fine and then I raised it up and then the position was off by a little bit. Another feature that I added, or uncommented that I should say, was the change filament. So if you press that, so print pause, wait for start of filament. And so it'll go into the park position. And then it says, wait for filament to unload. And so now the filament will unload automatically. And that is just the Z or the E axis running backwards. Unloading the filament. 
Insert filament, press button to continue. And so now, I'm just gonna use the same filament here, of course. Come here, you. Let me break off this section. Try to load this with one hand. Oh, move the chair. Nope, not happening. All right, so now I've just changed the filament back to the same filament. I'm gonna go until I see it extrude. I'm gonna hit press button to heat nozzle. So now it'll heat back up. I'll pause this. And so I already inserted the filament. It might have done it a little bit out of order. Wait for filament purge. So now it'll purge the filament a bit. And then you either purge more or continue, and we're gonna continue. And it goes right back to printing. So I really like those two features, the Z-axis baby stepping for getting the first layer perfect, and then the change filament command, either when you're running out of filament or you actually do want to change colors in the middle of a print. So everything seems to be working pretty well so far. If you want to download this G-code, if you want to download this firmware, I have it linked in the video description. I have a link to my Dropbox. I've updated everything, make sure it's working properly. I've tested it on my printer multiple times. Everything seems to be working now. So feel free to download it if you want to download it. If you want to keep the software you're running on your current printer because everything's working fine, I recommend you do that as well. So if you want these features added to your Robo 3D R1 Plus, feel free to download the firmware in the link down below in the description. And if you want any other features enabled, um, I could definitely test them out, make sure they work properly before I resubmit the G-code, before I resubmit the firmware again. Everything seems to be working properly as it is right now. It's very stable and it does in fact work with your Robo 3D R1. And if you like this video, make sure you click that subscribe button. If you have any questions about this video or suggestions for future videos, make sure you leave your comments down below. Hopefully next month I will have an update on the vehicle and I'll be able to 3D print some more stuff to make the vehicle even better than what it is. But for now, I hope your 3D printer is running properly. And like I said before, if you have any questions about anything with the configuration of the software, please let me know down below. Or you can email me at markeverjohn at gmail.com. That will also be linked down in the description below. But until next time, have a nice day.